Welcome back to High Crime, a show where I take an edible and get way too high and talk about a disgusting serial killer. Very special episode today because I have a new edible I'm trying. It is a donation from a dear friend, Jared, who I've known my whole life, and now he's enabling my drug problem, so I'm very excited about that. They're called Kanha, and it's a hybrid. I'm nervous and excited, mostly nervous. Goodbye. I think you're gonna do wonderful things to me. I'm very nervous. <laughs> you guys, I don't know if I'm high enough. If I don't know, Maybe I am. It's called stoner math. I got my hair cut like a fun divorced mom who smokes a ton of weed. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about... Oh my god, I just forgot his name. Dennis Nielsen. He's kind of seen as a British Jeffrey Dahmer. And what else is he known as? The kindly killer. I don't think he's very kind, but... That's just me. Dennis Nielsen was born in 1945 in Fraserburgh, Scotland, a tiny fishing town that was rife with incest because it was such a small town. They only knew these people and sometimes your sister looks sexy as hell. Thanks. And his dad was from Norway and he met Dennis's mom Betty White, no relation. So they got married a few months later and she popped out three kids in rapid succession. The third kid, uh, I forget his name. It's on my brain and it won't, it won't exit. Olaf, Olaf, like the snowman. Dennis years later said that the only thing his mother and him had in common with their fondness for cock. That is <laughs> so upsetting. <laughs> it's good to sh it's good to share things. These are nice. I feel warm. So because they were all so inbred, mental illness was very common. Dennis's maternal side were unwell and then the mother and the children went to live with her father dennis's grandfather and dennis became incredibly close with his grandfather he was like the most stable functional adult in dennis's life so they were very tight and one day dennis comes home from school or somewhere and he sees there are a bunch of people in his house and then he sees his grandfather's dead body so no one had told him that his grandfather had died. He found out by seeing his corpse when he was six years old. So that was his introduction to death. So some wires got crossed. And then at 16, he joined the army for nine years. So in the army is where his fantasies began to kind of ramp up and they were odd. I don't judge. Whatever makes you sploosh, that's cool. As long as you're not harming someone without consent, then we're good. We're all good here. I'm fuzzy on the details of all of his fantasies, but basically the gist was an older, fatter, uglier, so he said, man would take advantage of him. So at, sometimes at parties or like wherever he was, he pretended to be passed out in hopes of someone taking advantage of him. So after the army, he became a cop, but he's only a cop for like nine months, and they all knew that something was up with this guy. And later when he was caught, and all they heard was that an ex-cop had been caught for murder, one of the cops was like, I bet all my money that it's a Dennis Nelson. I think you can always tell when there's something off about someone. It's in your gut. And our guts are pretty smart. So of course he was a terrible alcoholic, and, but he weighed like a buck 15, so he was a lightweight, like moi. 
I get drunk off of a zip of red wine, and I get just a little spicy. Dennis was gay, but when he was in, in a cop, one of the other cops was talking about this gay place that all the gays went to, and he was being homophobic. Dennis was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what is this place? Just curious, I just wanna know where it is for no reason. So he went there, found some companions, he met a younger man who he called Twinkle, and they moved in together very, very fast. But apparently it didn't work out because their taste in music was too different. Dennis Nielsen was obsessed with music. He tried to soundtrack his whole life, and he would murder people to certain songs. But I will play some for you. Here, here's what I want you to do. Just imagine this scary tiny dude is dismembering human corpses in the full nude, just furiously, excitedly. He also threw up when that happened. There's blood flying everywhere. And then picture that when you're listening to this song. <laughs> enjoy that. I think I need more. Why won't this open now? <laughs> so his fantasies started to get worse and worse and then uh, pretty soon he acted on them with his first victim, a 14 year old boy who he brought back to the house and he looked over at him and was like, wouldn't it be nice if he stayed forever? Just as his little like very silent boyfriend. So he, he strangled him. I guess that didn't work, so he drowned him in a bucket of water. And he kept the body for eight months. Until finally, I think the smell got way too bad, which... Um, disclaimer again. Push on past this. He had bodies in his fucking floorboards. And apparently the fly situation was out of control. To the point where they were, like, overproducing, and some of the heads were so filled with maggots that it was like coming out their fucking sockets. He had a total of 15 victims. He figured out if you dismember the bodies, it's easier to dispose of them. So he would dismember them and then put them in the floorboards. And then later when it got too many, he in the fire. If those dismembered limbs do not spark joy, you don't need to get out of your life. There was some necrophilia. So he also claimed to just like black out when these happened. So he didn't remember any of these murders, which I think a lot of killers use that excuse of like, I don't know what happened just now. Most of these murders were uh, in a house on Melrose. In London and then he moved into the most the most swell hills apartment apartment and this is where he gets caught because he started to when he dismembered the bodies flush some of the parts down the toilet so everyone's complaining that like the water's not working it's clogged up and so they have someone come out take a look and they find in the pipes human flesh and bones the police were called and they went to Nilsson's door and was like, what's happening? And he's like, yeah, he died. That was like the easiest confession. I think that's right. You're not coming here for facts. You're not coming for sloppy research. And so sometimes he would burn these bodies in broad daylight. And one time they heard him playing the exorcist theme song while burning these bodies. So like Dahmer, he was a product killer. So he didn't necessarily like the process of killing. He just wanted the product, which is this vacant, dead zombie lover. Dahmer would get loaded, kill them so he wouldn't remember murdering them. And then just did nasty things with the bodies. You all know about Dahmer. I have to tell you guys about Dahmer. If you don't know about Dahmer, 
don't talk to me. His second murder was Kenneth Ockenden. He invited him over. He's like, listen to the song. And while he's listening, Dennis takes the headphone cord and tries to strangle him with it and saying, let me listen to the song. He gave it to him. Oh, and he had a little dog named Bleep. <sighs> Quarantine's making me so depressed. Nothing matters. We're all gonna die. So he goes to prison for six of the murders because some of them couldn't be identified. But then he was talking to everybody. The press was having a field day. He was so excited to share what he did. And he was like, I'm gonna die in prison because I can't be reformed. And he's said to have several lovers in prison, so good, great for him. I think that little, oh, little bite's kicking in. In prison, he was like, you are depriving me of gay porn. This is a human rights violation. And they were like, I don't think you need that. I don't know, maybe, maybe inmates should have porn. I don't know. Let's not get political. There's so much more. And I don't know right now. I'm done, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, still taking suggestions. I have a nice little list that I would like to get through. But if you really want to hear one, let me know. And maybe I'll take it. Fucking freaks. Share this shit. Ah.